Welcome back. Today I want us to look at Nijay K. Gupta's new book, Tell Her Story, How Women Led, Taught, and Ministered in the Early Church. This is an excellent book that I highly recommend. It's a book about women in ministry, but not really about women in ministry. It's trying to begin by telling the story of women in the Bible. So one of the best things about the book is the way it orders everything. So most books that want to address women in ministry and the issue of whether women can serve in office will begin with the difficult texts and it will work its way through, you know, first Timothy or the household codes or parts of first Corinthians and try to navigate all of those difficult, challenging texts or Genesis one through three. And this book deals with all of those but it begins with the fact that everywhere there was ministry, there was women there. So it starts with Deborah and looks at the role of Deborah in the Old Testament and her calling as a judge. And then it does deal with Genesis 1 through 3 and some of the other passages in the Old Testament about women. In every point, uh, Nijay Gupta names that more men were leaders than women but there also were women present and were women leading. It then deals with the context of the ancient world. Yes, were most men householders or most household leaders men? Yes, but there were women who managed households, who led households, who were property owners, all of those sorts of things. It looks at the ministry of Jesus. Were there women disciples? Yes. Were there women present? Yes. We see it all through the Gospels. Everywhere there were ministry, there were women. So we then looks at Phoebe and Priscilla and Junia, looks at some examples working through, you know, how did they, how are they portrayed in the Bible? How do they relate to the men? Um, particularly looking at Phoebe as someone who was sent with the letter to the to the Romans and not just like a letter carrier like we would think of today, but this was a really significant position of authority to actually interpret Paul's letter to the Romans, to the Roman community. And so he works through all of this in a really excellent way, showing that women were in ministry. Yes, there were more men than women. I've said that already, and he's not going to shy away from that, but there were women in ministry in the early church in the New Testament. They were deacons, and kind of rustles through, what does that word mean? They were considered elders, what does that word mean? He's a little bit less about office than he is about function, but these women functioned in leadership. So that's the bulk of the book, and then in the postscript, he deals with the questions of 1 Timothy 2 and the household codes. And what I love is that that becomes the postscript. So he still deals with those issues, but he doesn't front load them in the book. So he begins with the reality of ministry and asks questions like, if Deborah, the judge Deborah, showed up in Paul's church, do you actually think he would have said, Deborah, you need to sit down? No, of course not. Deborah was a leader. Deborah was a judge. She was respected. Um... And Paul had all these women that he was working with that he commends intensely in places like Romans 16. And so when you look at the practice of Paul and the rest of the early church in its relationship with women, even the practice of Jesus as he has women disciples, then when you start to ask the question of how do we make sense of some of these other passages, how do you make sense of the household codes, how do you make sense of this, it reframes it in a really helpful way. So the best part with this is I've often given people Craig Keener's Paul Women and Wives as the book to read on women in ministry. And I still think that's a fantastic and excellent book, but it does it in the other order. It deals with all those difficult texts and I think it does an admirable job. But I do think this book will become my number one go-to to give to people when they have questions about should women be in leadership? Should what were the role of women in the church? I think I'm going to be pointing to this book 
because I think it goes about it the right way. It takes every text seriously, but that includes the texts that show women leading. And it takes seriously the text. So how do we wrestle with, you know, um, you know, the first Timothy's and the household codes? And it does that in a really helpful, biblically faithful way. But it begins with the reality that everywhere there was ministry, there were women. And so I would highly recommend you pick up this book. If you believe women should be in office, this is going to be a great resource for you. If you're unsure about women in office, also pick this up because this is going to challenge you. It's going to make you think again about how you handle the reality of the place of women in the life of the church, in the early church. And the the other thing about this book is it's not, it's clear, but it's not heavy handed. So there's a couple points where he points out that he didn't grow up even imagining that women could be anywhere in, in the Bible. That, you know, he read, well, well, they're the 12 disciples, and so all the disciples were men. There were just no women there. It just didn't even cross his mind until he started to read deeper and actually read the passage. He didn't come to this conviction because he decided women should be in office from some other cultural reason, but came to it from realizing as he read the New Testament and read the Bible more clearly that there were women present and they were leading and Paul commends them. And Jesus is served by women and they sat at his feet as disciples. And so how can we do any different? (laughs) And so again, highly recommend this book. Pick it up. Uh, We have affiliate links below that will help us out and also it helps out the author as you pick up this book. As always, you can check out any of our work in the description below, but also like and subscribe for more book reviews and teachings. And thank you for taking the time to watch.